Hello, and welcome to Sound Library. My name is Stefan Schutz. I've been a composer and sound designer in the game industry for over 12 years, and I've been a musician for over a quarter of a century. When I was young, a friend of mine took me on our bikes across three suburbs to a pizza parlor. And in that pizza parlor was the very first Space Invaders game in our entire area. Needless to say, within seconds, I was hooked for life. Um, I've been a big gaming fan for many, many years, long before I even entered the industry and even thought about entering the industry. And games have always been something that have been really, really important to me, as is Sound and Music. This is the first in an ongoing series of game audio analysis videos. So these are not gonna be reviews of games, but an in-depth analysis of exactly what's going on within the game from an audio point of view. So we'll look into how the audio supports the narrative of the game, uh, what types of techniques they've used in producing the audio for the game, and also what things have worked particularly well from an audio point of view in the game, and also what things have not worked very, very well. I'm gonna be presenting these videos across a really broad range of game platforms right back to some of the very, very earlier platforms, such as the Nintendo and the Seegers, through to the current generation of home video game systems, including portable systems such as iOS devices, Android, um, Nintendo DS, Sony Vita, etc. So, as the first of these videos, we're going to start with something that was really quite simple in scope, and very, very simple in the resources that it used. And yet, it's probably more complex than most people realise. We're going to head right back to 1977 and we're going to start with the game that started it for me and that is Space Invaders. Space Invaders is very simple sonically, only having five actual sound effects in the game. A simple four note repeating musical theme and some user interface or UI sounds to indicate coin added and player selection and free man. So all in all, there are about a dozen different sounds but that doesn't mean the audio is not a vitally important aspect of the success of this game. The goal of the game is to fend off the ever-advancing alien horde as they move closer and closer to landing on Earth. Your tank can fire shots to destroy the invaders and move left and right to avoid their incoming fire. So far, so good. Except, as the game progresses, the rate of movement of the aliens increases, thus providing a greater threat. Or does it? If I just manoeuvre the tank without engaging the aliens, the music tempo proceeds unchanged. In fact, if it were possible for me to continue to avoid them, the invaders would work their way to the bottom and defeat me, and the music would be unchanged. It is only when I actively fire at and destroy invaders that the game responds and increases the tempo. So, even the very first Space Invaders game was interactive in its use of music. Aliens get destroyed, and everything speeds up, making the player's job of defending the world more difficult. But even here, not everything is as it first seems. As we destroy a few invaders, the tempo increases, adding pressure to the player. But what has actually increased? If we indicate the tempo of the music on one side, and the tempo of the invaders' movement on the other side, we can observe some very clever design choices. When we activate the first tempo increase after the first half dozen invaders destroyed, all that has occurred is an increase in the tempo of the music. The actual movement of the aliens is unchanged. In fact, throughout the course of the game, the tempo of the music increases two or three times for every one increase in the actual movement speed of the invaders. We are being tricked as we play. The increase in the music tempo heightens the tension of the game and can produce an emotional response in the player. The player may feel panicked or rushed, thinking that the game has just become harder, when in fact, nothing has changed. Playing the game with no audio really highlights how effective this is. With no sound, we have a disconnect to the pace and urgency of the game. We can proceed methodically with less of an emotional response to the game state. This of course reduces the enjoyment of the game, as the state of tension is an essential aspect of the gameplay, but it is an interesting exercise. For such a simple game concept, there is a very real purpose and function for the game audio. Appreciating how key audio can be even in the simplest of games sets the foundation for many of our future analysis videos into some of the more complex aspects of game audio production and implementation. Audio can go a long way to defining how users perceive the game they are experiencing. 
and there are tons of effective techniques for altering how we enjoy our games. Few little secrets in Space Invaders that perhaps not everybody was aware of. It's still a very, very simple game, but I find it really, really fascinating that right from one of the very earliest video games, the sound of music was very, very important as to how we perceived the game and how we played the game. In future videos, as I've said, we're going to have a look across a broad range of games on a broad range of platforms. And I get to continue doing what I love the most, playing games. Thanks for watching.